to Movement Not Miracles. It's Friday, um, end of the week. Oh, how is the time going so quickly? I don't really understand. It's been another busy week, which is great. Um, and here we are on the gateway to the weekend. Uh, oh, I've got something in my eye, which is not good. So it's time for Movement Not Miracles. I'm Anna from Eat, Move, Be Happy. Um, I've got a feeling that I need a nice Eat, Move, Be Happy logo on the back wall here. It would fit beautifully with the colour scheme in my office. Um, so, Mr. Reese, we need to make that happen. I need a logo on the wall. Um, so, Movement Not Miracles today. Um, I've called it getting ready for the weekend. So, a, a little bit of everything. So, I'm going to start up here and work all the way down and there's a bit of a combination of there are some mobility stuff and there's some stretch stuff um, so we can work through some seated some standing but um, I think all of them you can do um, from seated if you need to um, so just to remind everybody movement not miracles is sort of what it says on the tin in that um, if we keep moving, if we keep our joints moving and we keep our muscles stretched and um, mobile, then we are less likely to get stiffer and um, not want to move. When we stay in the same position for long periods of time, it's easy for things to stiffen up. And when your joints get stiffer, that's when um, if one part of your body is stiff, then another part of the body has to compensate for that which can cause stiffness in muscles and unhealthy joints. And that just gives us general aches and pains and it's not as easy to get through um, the daily task of moving around. So keeping mobile is a really good habit to get into. And I absolutely guarantee that most of us don't do it as much as we could or should. So hopefully these very brief sessions are giving you some ideas on some of the things that you can do easily at home um, and you don't particularly need any equipment um, and hopefully keep yourselves a little bit more mobile and look after those joints. So we're going to start off um, chest stretch but working on the neck as well. So as ever make sure whether you're seated or standing you have your weight evenly distributed. One of the really bad habits that we fall into um, is standing on one foot and sticking that hip out and it, it might be, I don't know, waiting in a queue at the supermarket um, or waiting for the kettle to boil and all we're cleaning our teeth and we just stand on one leg which actually means we are um, working through one side of the body more than the other so as far as possible we should be standing or it's better to stand with our weight evenly spread um, between our left and our right side which helps us stay more balanced um, and doesn't put pressure on one side than the other um, so weight evenly distributed between either your left and right foot or if you're sitting your left and your right bottom bone. Sit forward on the bones, don't lean back on the chair. Um, and I'm just looking what we're doing because I've forgotten. Um, so we're doing a chest stretch. So you're going to clasp your hands behind your back and stretch across, ooh, that was my shoulder clicking. Stretch across the front of your collarbones. So you need to think about rolling your shoulders back and squeezing your shoulder blades together to start off with. And when that happens, what you need to be careful of is that your bum, I don't know whether you can see it with this t-shirt on, your bum doesn't stick out. So don't want a big arch in the lower part of your back. So you need to tilt your pelvis, work through your bottom to tilt your pelvis forwards. And also when you reach and push your arms away, I don't want you to let your ribs, your belly stick out and your ribs flare. So you should be Contracting your tummy muscles so that your tummy should feel hard, tightening your tummy and your bum should be working. So these stretches are not just passive stretches, you're not just flopping into the position, you're actually having to work for it. Of course, what do they say? All the good things in life you have to work for or something like that. So we're thinking of squeezing those shoulder blades together 
and really broadening across your collarbones. So you should feel a stretch across the front of your chest. And while you're in this position, without letting your bum stick out and without letting your belly flare, just stretch that neck over to one side. And then come back up to the center, keeping that stretch. So pushing your arms away from your body. Arms should be as straight as you can get them and over to the other side. Okay, we'll just release our shoulders and take that into just a shoulder roll. So really shrug your shoulders up to your ears, squeeze your shoulder blades together as you bring them back down. And then we're gonna do the first one again because the second time is always better. So arms nice and wide, clasp your hands together, make sure your glutes are working to push your hips forward really stretch, squeeze your shoulder blade and stretch across your collarbones, nice and relaxed through the neck and then just move your head over to one side and hold it for a couple of breaths. Back to the centre, re-establish that stretch across your chest and over to the other side. Okay, and nicely done. So a bit of a tactical waggle in the shoulders if you've got stiff shoulder joints like me, I feel that one across the front of my shoulders, which is fine. Um, right, wrists. So wrists and forearms. So first of all, again, keeping that good posture. So don't let any of this happen. Belly working, butt working. And you're just going to push that arm straight and pull your fingers back gently with the other arm. So you're going to feel a stretch through your wrist and this part of your arm. So we'll hold that for a couple of breaths and then we'll do the other side. So you can lean on a table to do this, but sometimes we forget about our wrists. And particularly if you are working at a, a workspace that's not designed and not set up for you to be working on a, on a laptop or a computer, our wrists can get quite stiff and our forearms can get quite stiff. So this is just a simple stretch that you can do to mobilise through your wrist joints. And it's particularly useful if you're doing front squats, because if you're trying to support the barbell on the front of your hands and you need to keep your elbows up, the wrists need to bend in order for that to happen, as I know. Um, and it doesn't always work for me. Right, shoulder rolls. So we did a, a little taster of shoulder rolls when we were doing the first exercise. So now what we're, we're going to do, concentrate on shoulders up and all the way down and really squeeze those shoulder blades together on the back of your chest. And either take that into an arm roll, but if you've got a belt handy, we'll take it into shoulder dislocates. Now, you're not gonna get my arms in full shot, but you're aiming for something that um, you can brace your arms against. Um, so I'm using a yoga strap, but you can use a dressing gown belt, an ordinary belt, um, a broom handle, anything that you can brace yourselves against, bearing in mind that you're gonna put your arms up and over, so make sure you don't whack any light fittings. I don't want to be held responsible for any broken lampshades in your house. And then we're going all the way up and all the way over. The setup is exactly the same, so don't lose that good form. And again, you can do this seated or standing. Aim for a nice gentle move to start off with. Don't force your arms over. But when you get to the widest point, which is about there for me, really squeeze those shoulder blades together and then keeping your arms straight all the way up and over the top. This helps your shoulder joint actually move through a really good range of movement because the danger is we don't encourage it to do this enough. Our shoulder blades don't move around on our back enough. Our shoulder blades have to move to enable the arms to move in the shoulder socket. So this is a good way of really waking up those shoulders. And you're aiming just to 
shorten the distance between your arms. I'm about on my limit because you want to be able to keep your arms straight. If your elbows bend, then that's not working through your shoulder joints, working through your elbow joint. So it's a nice controlled move and at the widest point, just squeeze those shoulder blades and then come back over. I like that one, that one works for me. Um, right, so now we're just going to show you from the side. So um, I'm calling this one standing or seated cat camel. You can do this kneeling on all fours, but the idea behind this one is you're gonna really push your arms out and I'm sucking my belly in. So you're sort of almost um, trying to create a nice curve, a C shape. I do it this way. <laughs> a C shape in your back. You're not gonna be able to see whether I've got a nice C shape because of my t-shirt. But you're really reaching out with your hands. My hands are clasped. And then you're bringing what I would call, let me show you from here, just about getting shot. So if you connect your arms back into your shoulder joint. So to start off with, you're reaching forward. So you're getting a nice stretch through the muscles in your back. And then you're reversing it. So in a nice stretch forward, and again, as ever, the setup is exactly the same. So don't let the bottom half of your back stick out. And then reach forward. So this should be, you might not get into your lower back, but you should be stretching through your upper and mid back. And one more for fun. Okay, so. Shoulders and upper back, mid back should be starting to feel a little bit more awake and just checking what's coming next. Ooh, my favorite, um, side bends. So I'll just move my chair. I do need my chair in a minute, which is why it's there. So side bend, start with your setup. And first of all, we're going to aim, we're gonna stretch that arm up as high as it will go. So even before you start moving, you think stretch, 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 and then stretch a tiny bit more, and then think of pushing that other arm down the other side, and then really stretching that top arm away. Now, if you're struggling with this arm, don't worry about that too much. Think of standing nice and tall, broad across your collarbones, and then as you push this arm down, think of really lifting through this side of your body. So you're trying to get as much bend in the spine and you'll feel stretched on the outside as you can. And then the same on the other side. So if you can, a big stretch up and then a bit more and then a bit more and then over we go. Don't forget to relax everywhere else and to keep breathing and really push that arm over. So you should feel a nice stretch, but also quite a lot of movement through that spine, which feels good. Okay, where are we up to? Right, we're gonna take these. This is why we're going to do So we're gonna do a couple of seated moves now. So make sure you are sitting on the edge of your chair weight evenly distributed between the bones of your bottom. So think about sitting on the bones of your bottom and not the fleshy part of your bum at the back. So we shouldn't be slouching. And sitting up nice and tall with some good breath across your collarbones. And then you're just gonna lift one leg so that your ankle rests just above your knee. Now if you've got really stiff outer hip and um, glutes, piriformis muscle, then you're gonna feel, I can feel that quite tight in my hip now. So all I want you to do is think of just gently persuading that knee to move down towards the floor. And as you keep breathing, it should give a little bit more. And then what I want you to do then is just to lean forwards. Lean forwards a little bit to increase that stretch. and just persuade that hip and that glute to give. 
and then we'll do that on the other side but we'll come back and do that because the second time is always better so other side exactly the same so sitting nice and tall just persuade that knee to go down to the side and then when you you can relax everywhere else if you have tension in the rest of your body it's often more difficult to get a stretch in the bit that you're focusing on just because everything else tenses up so if you can relax everywhere else and then we're just going to lean forwards a little bit and then my hips are really tight today maybe I should have done hips oh well, never mind my, my shoulders and my back feel better so that's okay Okay, we'll do it once more on the other side because the second time is always better. Sitting nice and tall. And they still feel tight, but interestingly, I've got a bit more movement this time, which is good. So you can do this while you're sitting at your desk. So um, just changing the way you are sitting is useful sometimes. And then once more on the second side. I just encourage that knee to move down towards the floor. For that to happen, you have to roll through your hip and lean forwards a tiny bit. Okay, and then whilst we're sitting, we're going to take that into a seated twist. So again, sitting nice and tall, the feet flat on the floor, and you are away from the back of the chair. And we're going to twist to the right to start off with. So your left hand comes over your right thigh and you need to resist that leg moving. So you're going to be working through your leg for that to happen and your right arm reaches back behind you. So reach to the top of the chair if you can um, or you can reach lower down the chair rest if that's too much of a stretch. You need to be sitting really tall and up out of your pelvis with a really broad chest for, to get the movement through your spine. So sit nice and tall and think of um, twisting one vertebrae at a time. So each breath you take, as you breathe out, think of twisting a tiny bit more. And we're trying to get your chest around as much as you can. So you'll be stretching through your muscles but also, as you breathe out, that tiny movement will be encouraging your spine to twist. And we'll do this the other way. That's what we do one side, we need to do the other side so we're not wonky. Don't forget to sit nice and tall. Relax through your neck and your jaw. Just pay attention to where your tongue sits in your mouth when you're doing these. If your tongue is in the roof of your mouth, your tongue is a muscle, and if your tongue is in the roof of your mouth, then that's because there's some tension there. So your tongue should be sitting in the base of your mouth, nice and relaxed. And once more, this way. Every time you breathe out, a tiny, tiny bit more. Okay, and then last one for today, um, a forward bend. So if you're doing this seated, let me show you from the side. So exactly the same sit setup, sitting on the bones of your bottom, sitting nice and tall, away from the backrest, and you're going to fold forwards. Let me move along a bit. You're going to fold forwards and think of as if someone's pulling your chest forwards from your sternum. So someone's got a rope and they're pulling you forwards and you're just going to fold down as low as you can go without letting this happen. So we're not caving in on the back, we're keeping our chest up and chest broad. So your shoulder blades should be flat on the back, on, on your back, not just collapsing into it. So that's if you're seated. If you are standing, I'm going to use the back of the chair as a 
as a support. Kitchen work surfaces are a good height for this or um, window sills. Whatever you're using, make sure it's not going to move um, because you're going to be pushing your weight down on this and you're aiming for your legs to stay vertical. So we don't want your bum so far back that your legs, there's an angle here. You want right angles between your hips and your body. And you'll feel a stretch down the back of your legs, but you'll also, we're aiming to get some movement through pressing our arms down through our upper back. Um, it is a forward bend, a supported forward bend. So if you have a bit of a dodgy lower back, just make sure you go into this gradually. So start off here and then gradually push back through your legs so that you have full extension through your arms. You're aiming to have your armpits fully open. That's a lovely description, isn't it? Push through your hands so that you can stretch through those shoulders. Think of pushing your bottom back behind you. Your back should be nice and flat and pushing down through the support through your hands so that you can access that upper back. And your head should be relaxed. Think about where that tongue is. Don't have any tension in your jaw. Okay. I like that stretch as well. That helps my upper back and um, my lower back and my legs. So that's it for this week's Movement Not Miracles. Thank you for joining in. Um, have a fabulous weekend. I hope, don't know what the weather's going to be doing, um, but hey ho, that's what we've got waterproofs for. And we need a bit of rain, don't we? So we might get a bit wet on Sunday when the bike's carrying, but hey ho, we'll have fun. Um, enjoy your weekend. We'll be back on Monday at 12 o'clock for more Movement Not Miracles. Um, check out the website. Eat, Move, Be Happy is all about um, ideas for you to eat better, move better, learn about health and well-being, um, help you through the choices, make some choices that maybe you wanted to make, create some, um, shift your habits, create some good habits. There's loads of stuff on the website. There are different subscription levels, so you can choose what works for you. Um, work out with those videos, there's a big library of those now, so um, I've been describing those as uh, workout Lego, so you can build your own workout um, and exercise in a way that's fun with Karen or I, or Karen and I, if they were earlier, um, work out with those videos, and um, in your own time, so flexible and for as long as you, for the time that you have. Um, so check out the website www.eatmovebehappy.com and um, have a fab weekend and I will see you on Monday.